So much for America as a leader of the free world. We are out of the Paris Climate Accord. The media reaction is that it's an extraordinary abdication of American leadership. It is a shameful moment for the United States. Right now, they're, they're weeping. They're, they're sad that the United States is withdrawing from its leadership role because, you know, frankly, they know that it means a, a less stable world. Well, the great madness over the Paris Agreement consumes all in its path. Thousands of celebrities and talking heads and other wise men are crying out all at once, proclaiming the supreme importance of an agreement that they, for the most part, know virtually nothing about. Mark Green is a former New York City public advocate. He's also the founder of Shadowing Trump. It's an anti-Trump shadow cabinet. That cabinet has been particularly unhappy about the Paris pullout, tweeting, quote, this is not a democracy. Trump's like a lethal spreading virus. Either he kills us or we stop him. Mark Green joins us tonight. Now, Mark, I know you don't like Trump, and you've got That's a lot. That's a pretty good metaphor. Well, it's a grotesque metaphor, but let's get specific rather than metaphorical, if we could, sure. just for one I, second, because you're a smart it. guy. Um, so a lot of things you disagree with Trump, fine. But the Paris Agreement is what people are upset about right now. And I'm just wondering why, if you really cared about CO2 emissions, you would back an agreement that doesn't hold China or India, two of the biggest polluters in the world, to reducing those emissions, as the Paris Agreement doesn't. Why would you be in favor of that? Uh, the UN realized after the Kyoto Agreement that they couldn't have binding standards. And so they decided, with uh, John Kerry among them, to have voluntary standards. So how do you make sure that China was up to its voluntary standards? or Germany, or America, or Russia. Well, peer pressure around the world, because we live in one lifeboat, there's no planet B. So they came up with an idea that, Tucker, it's not about hypocrisy. Ann Coulter is right. We're all sinners. On the one side is Donald Trump, who, talk about not knowing what's in the agreement, is obviously a guy who's quite ill-equipped, inexperienced, and without knowledge about issues like this. He was very good on real Really? Estate. Because you've already well, made said, a mistake in characterizing the agreement. So I wonder how much you know. Uh, well, so all, I, all the agreement no, no, is, is voluntary. It's, it's voluntary. The whole thing is. Uh, Trump's statement at the Rose Garden said, this non-binding agreement is so draconian. Which is it? Is it coercive and draconian? On the other side, a majority of voters in every state according to Frank Luntz, wants to stay in Paris. Okay, a but, majority but, of... But, the, but you're not answering my question. I asked you a specific... Okay, everyone wants it. Great. But I... Because you're a smart guy, I want you to talk about the agreement itself, not the politics of the agreement. Okay. And I want you to tell me why, if you're concerned about CO2, you think that's causing global warming, why you would back an agreement that does not require two of the biggest polluters in the world, even voluntarily, to reduce their CO2 emissions till 2030 and allows China to continue using coal and ramping up its coal use for the next five years. Why is that good? Um, you can't make the perfect the enemy of the good. Something that we would agree with in the abstract. The UN and the world can't have an entity that force that would challenge our sovereignty or China's sovereignty. So they came up with something, Tucker, that 194 nations from um, Kim, Kim Jong-un to Putin to uh, George W. Bush said is the best way to continue the acceleration of car less carbon. And so you know the market but has been working. that's not what it says. It says it's non-binding no, and every country sets its own standards why with should peer we, pressure. Why, hold on. Why should we support something that doesn't even set voluntary limits on CO2 emissions for China and India and call that environmentalism? It's the opposite of environmentalism. No, it's not. Well, then why do all environmentalists, scientists, I'm and asking all you. I'm not asking about other people who are present. I, I want to know your view of it. I will. My view is identical uh, to 98% of scientists, all world leaders, and the majority of voters. Staying in Paris would help reduce carbon over time because China, India, and America, all three have been the biggest carbon emitters in the last few decades, have said, okay, well, we're not going to shut down our coal plants now. And not, not, none of that's required, as you know. Coal is down in America. They're going to increase coal usage in China. And increase it. The peak coal in China, the, the chart shows it's here. And now, by no, the way, that's China, not true. That is not what it says. China it says knows that China, cities, China's choking on its the, cities. I, of course, we agree Don't on that. My, look, my point is, you guys are selling this agreement. You're lying about what it says. It doesn't actually promise or even hold them to a non-binding pledge that they will reduce their CO2 emissions anytime in the near future. Why don't you just say that out loud? Because that's true. And yet it does require the United States to do that. Why? Hold it. 
It requires the United States to do it. You know that's wrong. Please. Requires Please. the United States to pledge that we will do it in a non-binding we'll, way. We'll try. And by the same, the same criteria that apply to India and China. But if CO2 itself is a poison, as you believe it is, then why the hell would we get behind something that allows the biggest CO2 emitter in the world to increase its CO2 emissions? Would you emissions? like to see less CO2 in the atmosphere? You're, you're dodging my question. I'm, I'm saying, why wouldn't you have an agreement that says we pledge to reduce it now, not a generation from now? We do pledge to start reducing it. No, they uh, don't. Co co one second. They have said voluntarily that we are aiming to reduce carbon over time. So unlike you, I agree with the world's scientists, businessmen, and countries. Now, you can laugh. So stupid. You know, scientists and businessmen. I'm asking you specific questions. You're not giving me specific answers, and you're appealing to people who aren't here whose names you don't know. So, like, that's not an answer. Hold it. The answer is, with Paris, countries have a moral suasion to keep progress on keeping... Do you know who Lysenko was? Of course I do. Okay. He was the Soviet he, scientist excellent. who, like you, substituted religion for science and wound up with insane conclusions. He That's said he that was. you could uh, right. uh, learn traits could be inherited. Yeah. Why do all scientists oppose you, Tucker Carlson? That's a bigger I'm question I'm asking questions because it's not a religion, it's science. And you don't answer Elon them. Musk you you throw private religion back at me. Mark, it's great to see you. Facts are facts. Keep, keep the faith. You're not dealing with facts. Macedonia has 2 million people and a GDP lower than Fox's gonna be annual under, revenue. Gonna be That's Mark Green, ladies and gentlemen. When Barron's but grandchildren are alive. Hillary Clinton is blaming them for her election loss. Up next, we'll look into whether this tiny republic's intrepid citizens subverted a superpower. Stay tuned for the Macedonia update. And maybe...